Welcome to the Fire Breathing Kittens, a standalone Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Each episode is a separate, complete adventure, so you can listen to them in any order. We are joined by Pidge. Hello, I am a rock gnome transfiguration wizard, level thirteen. I am a Nuzlocke challenge character, so I can only take transfiguration spells. A monist. Hi, I'm a monist. I am a level 13 fighter with twin curved swords all cross strapped to my back, leather armor, and a wolfhound looking dog riding along beside me. Rufus! <laughs> and Mendax. Hi, I'm a level 13 changeling bard. Level 13, unlucky for some. Let's see who dies today. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you are all in the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall. The guild is a large building with a bar, a sitting area with wooden tables and chairs, and a wall with a cork board and job flyers posted. Okay. What are we doing today, guys? Hi. I'm petting Rufus. Rufus is so cute. Yeah, yeah, he is. So, it looks like we're all uh, here today. Should we do a job? Sure. Let's see if there's anything good. And Monus walks over to the job flyer and just takes a gander. Anything stand out? Um, there is nothing on there except for a single piece of paper. And it looks like it's a actually roll perception for me. Mm. First roll of the day. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got a nat one. <laughs> it looks like a plain piece of paper to you. It's a good omen for the game. <laughs> okay. End of episode. Well, you know, I like stationery. <laughs> I'm going to take that and I'm going to just go put it in my pocket. How are you going to read the writing first? <laughs> I thought it was a plain piece of paper. Uh, it's, so you, you don't notice anything special, but you do notice that there's writing on it. Oh, okay. Sure. I'll read it. Okay. So on this piece of paper, it <laughs> says, there's something weird going on at the Nexus, which you all would know as the annual fair. And Carnival, please come and help before I have to shut down the fair. And it's signed Alicia, Al Alisa McKellen. Hmm. I'm going to show this to my compatriots here. Wait. You do that. Mendax is busy trying to get his uh, sentient puppet to try and eat something. He's not quite sure whether it does eat, but he's trying it on a couple of different <laughs> foods. So he's got some roast potatoes. He's got a couple of mini donuts. Uh, he's got some scotch eggs. He just wants to see whether the puppet will actually eat anything. Uh, no luck so far. <laughs> ah, wait, so what were those? Potato? I'm figuring out if it's like an, a carnivore or an omnivore or a detriverse. <laughs> we, we, we're trying Potato. at the moment. Um, so scotch, scotch eggs egg. are meaty. Sausagey, yeah. Potatoes are potato-y. So who, who, who knows? Hmm. But the puppet is not having any of it so far. Maybe he's just got an acquired taste. <laughs> for children so um, Pidge is definitely curious about this puppet and she's trying to feed it things seeing the carnival flyer she says I wonder if your puppet would enjoy a deep fried Twinkie hey you know you can ask me yourself I do talk <laughs> what, do you want a deep fried Twinkie at the carnival I have no idea what that is oh they're delicious yeah, sure, go for it. Okay. Where are we going? I'm honest, where are we going? Uh, it looks like we're going to a carnival. Mandax's eyes light up. A carnival? Does that mean there's ice cream? I want ice cream. It'll probably be deep fried. Deep fr oh, even better. Let's go. Let's go already. <laughs> yes. And there is oh, a Mendax-shaped <laughs> hole in the wall. <laughs> oh, he is gone. Yeah, I would go too. I, I take the door. <laughs> Oh, gosh, that was my stomach. Did you guys hear my stomach in real life? <laughs> <laughs> A monist, are you going to the carnival? Of course. Okay. So you guys all roll up on the carnival, and it seems... A little empty. Like, this is a carnival that rolls through every so often, and normally it's very busy. And it's kind of just... not. Um, at the entrance, you do see a uh, male gold dragon board, and you see... Dressed kind of in, like, a ringmaster's outfit. Smiling, waving, talking to people. And you can assume that this is the person who owns the fair, Elisa McKellen. Hmm. All right. Well, let's march right up. 
Hello, and welcome to the Nexus. This is the wonderful fair that my family has been running for a hundred years. Please enjoy your stay. Oh, uh, question. Is is there ice cream? I was promised ice cream by myself, and I would <laughs> really feel bad if I were to break that promise to myself. Yes, there is ice cream. You can find it in the food stalls. Great. Where is that? If you just walk in through our entrance, you'll be able to see everything. I sprint past. <laughs> All right. Um, Amonis is going to stick around and inform her that we're actually from the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild. We saw a flyer. Oh, wonderful. Um, So we've had some weird stuff going on. I don't know all of it but it's scaring my people off and i'm gonna have to shut the fair and i don't want to shut the fair because you know it's been in my family for generations uh so if you could just you know kind of poke around everybody knows you're gonna be here so as long as you say you're with the fire breathing kittens everybody should talk to you if they don't tell me and we'll interrogate them any <laughs> particular strange things been going on uh so my office got broken into a couple of days ago but I don't think anything was missing, which is really weird. And I know there was some stuff going on with the animals at the circus, because um, we did, unfortunately, lose an animal handler. Like, literally lose them. We don't know where they went. Was anything moved in your office? Oh. Like, papers read or shuffled through? Um, My office is a disaster and a mess, so I couldn't even tell you. I just know that something set off my magical alarm saying someone entered without me there. Interesting. Uh, what do you think, guys? Should we start? Or, well, actually, uh, Mendex is off getting ice cream. So, <laughs> Pidge, do you think we should start with the office? I think we have to get ice cream first. Okay, let's get ice cream. <laughs> uh, you hear you yeah. hear a voice from a bit further in just saying, Guys, I've got donuts here! This place is amazing! <laughs> let's go collect our child. I mean, Mendex. <laughs> <laughs> let's go collect our bard. Yeah. So... Pidge and Ammonist are walking to the ice cream and donuts section to Perfect. pick up Mendax. And some ice cream. I mean, heck, yeah. So Pidge has like a... What flavors are available? There are peach. There is <gasps> vanilla. There is sweet corn. There is apple. And then, there, of course, there's chocolate. Wait, did you say sweet corn? <laughs> yeah. I feel like I have to try the sweet corn. How could I not? I know, right? I have had cornbread ice cream, and it's great. Oh, so if you get the sweet corn, and if I get the peach, do you want to do halfsies of each? And Mendex, do you want in? That's all right. I, 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 I've I, got my own secret recipe, and his secret recipe is just casting prestidigitation on any other flavor <laughs> of ice cream. <laughs> like to change the flavor? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So last time he went for Raspberry Ripple, but this time he's feeling a bit more avant-garde. So he's going for the, the he's gonna he's gonna flavor it to this um, the feeling you get where you've had a really good night's sleep. That's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> Amonis, what flavor do you want? And I'll go have these on you with the sweet corn because I want to try it, but I don't want to be stuck with it. Uh, I feel like peach is pretty classic. Yeah. All right, and then we get like a half of each okay so you guys get a half the worker hands it to you um have have any of you eaten sweet corn before i'm from the country <laughs> yeah okay i just want to double check um uh so it's very refreshing almost the sweet corn and while it does taste like corn it tastes very sugary as the name would suggest i mean sweet corn but it's more sweet than like everything at the fair <laughs> right sugar yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice vicarious life we have set up for ourselves. <laughs> if so, did everybody eat the ice cream? I did. Yes. <laughs> you know it. Okay, you all should roll a d6 for me. I, I was uh. gonna say after, the way you say that makes me think maybe I shouldn't have rushed into ice cream. She got us. Why would you not rush into ice cream? I rolled a one. I rolled a three. <laughs> Five. Okay, so, Mendax, you have a green nose now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three. And Amonis, you now have rainbow hair. I dig it. And then... That's cool. Five. Oh, Pidge, you are temporarily uh. blind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mine is less cool. 
I I probably mentioned that to you guys. <laughs> I'm like, um, I hold out my hands in front of me, my eyes wide open. I will pick <laughs> up like... Pidge and put her on my shoulder until she originally returns. Okay. Um. So before, <laughs> when you guys walked into the entrance, just to kind of give you a, a layout of where everything is, um, you saw you had to walk through the wares, um, the merchant stalls in the middle, and then there's a gate. There was a game road to the left with a bunch of carnival games. There's a fighting arena and a jousting arena to the right, and then the food stalls are after the wares. There's a picnic area behind the food stalls, and also across the picnic area, you can see a Ferris wheel, some animal barns, an animal show arena. Um, there's a pony track next to the Ferris wheel, and then off to the kind of the top left of the field that they're in is the big top circus tent. So you guys do have options on where you want to go, um, and just pick places uh but and then as you guys are kind of walking around 10 seconds later pidge your vision comes back <laughs> oh good so, well that was fun <laughs> i still think we should check out the office first i think we might find some clues yeah so what are we actually here to do oh yeah you weren't there for that conversation i love my ice cream uh somebody broke into the office and an animal handler is missing Oh, nice. I mean, that sounds like a Tuesday to me, so what's, you know... Well, apparently not for these guys. <laughs> what has that got to do with us? It is a circus. You'd think it would be normal here, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys are going to go check out the office? Yeah. Okay, The uh, there is a sign that points to the office, and it's right behind kind of the wooden entrance that they've built up. Um, so you can very much so tell that this is a temporary structure and not like a very secure structure, um, which, you know, you would think people would have better structures, but it's the circus, so they don't, and the fair, so they don't. Um, and as you guys walk in, there's nobody there, the door's unlocked, um, and you, since you have permission, you're not going to set off anything magical, because um, Elisa knows you're there. Uh, and if you want to do a perception check for me... Is it possible for me to investigate instead of perceive? Or investigate, yes. <laughs> yeah, I rolled the two. I... I got a 19. <laughs> I got a 29. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Amonis, you find a stack of the same paper that the job was on, and it's clear and free. Um, and it's just sitting there next to a quill, and you can assume that that's where she wrote your job note. Um, okay. And if you, would, if you would like to take them, no, she's probably not going to miss a couple. Yeah. If you want fancy paper. Uh, for the other two, you noticed on the back wall that there is a line of keys that you would assume go to different things in the fair. And missing on the keys are the keys that are labeled animal stalls and sail barn. And you also notice, like, you guys have been around a lot of people in the Fire Breathing Kittens, so you know, like, what organized chaos looks like, and this just looks like chaos, chaos. So somebody just kind of went through all the papers and everything stacked kind of funny and not how you would expect someone who's used to living in chaos to organize their stuff. Hmm. I wonder if any of my friends today know detect magic because I do not. <laughs> so do your friends. Yeah, we're all friends here. Uh, I'm pretty useless as far as wizard stuff goes, but I can turn hags into sloths. <laughs> <laughs> Mendex? No luck with me. Ah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I do point out that the keys for the animal stalls and the sail barn are not on this key hook thing. Interesting. Well, we know kind of what happened with the animals. I haven't heard anything about the sail barn. Yeah. Maybe we should. You want to go yeah. there? Yeah. All right. I just want to feel useful, so I'm going to flavor the keys to be a, like uh, Chipotle, kind of chili flavored. <laughs> okay. In case they're licked or in case yeah, they're sniffed? Yeah. yeah, just in case, you know, we have to eat them, they taste nice. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a key for the... So we've got wares, games, fighting, picnic, ferris, pony, circus tent. Is there a key for the fighting area? No, there is not. Okay, just checking. But the f the fighting area is set up more like a like a round pen, 
and a mm. jousting arena so there wouldn't be a need for keys. Pidge, now that you've seen the keys, couldn't you recreate them from earth or stone? Yes, I could. Okay. So we don't need to take any keys. Like, we can access all of these places now. Yes. Um, I have the spell Fabricate, which specifically states that if I know how to make something, like, if, if I know how to sculpt clay, then I can make an item, you know? Okay. Um, yeah. You can do that. Sculpt but some clay. You also know you have, like, free access to everywhere anyways, because you were invited. Yeah. Like, you just have to say that you're... Yes. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> so, but, but that's yes on the... What can the transmutation wizard do? T take clay <laughs> and make keys <laughs> oh gosh yeah and i theoretically i can make keys okay okay right, but oh also i to, have the magic but... <laughs> paint haha -ha. oh yeah we could just paint keys yeah cool. and i have pass wall and uh transmute rock you walls walls can't hold us back anyway so all right uh let's uh <laughs> so we're going to the sail barn okay so you guys trek across um and as you're passing again there's just not a lot of people here um and the ones that s are here seem a little subdued and normally the fair is you know full of screaming children and people having fun and it's kind of sad uh and then mm -hmm. so as you approach the show arena um you notice that there are sections missing from the fence uh and it you can and investigate i guess to see if you n can find clues okay 16 16 you notice more oh, uh, oh. go ahead sorry. i was just waiting for mendax but oh I, I got a 17 i would i, I was going to assume pitches is, is just through the roof so oh I, yeah i didn't think it'd be worth it 27 yeah okay. there we go <laughs> pitch you walk up and you um pull on the you kind of look at the wood on the fence and you can see that it's kind of scorched like something Ooh. burnt it and you all notice that there are some flyers posted and on these flyers it says due to an unfortunate incident the animal livestock show is cancelled and it's signed Elise. Elisa hmm I show my friends I always show anything I investigate to everybody in my party okay. yep so you, you tell yeah. everybody um so you all know that so it's canceled the show arena is not that it was like super fancy it was just kind of like a square with a couple entrances and part of it is burned um but nobody's kind of over there um but they haven't like blocked it off they just posted the flyer hmm do you guys want to investigate yeah let's here? look back there <laughs> i'm halfway through my ice cream so i think i'm good that's the might have to take another trip back to the ice cream barn <laughs> Um, okay, so as you guys walk to the back corner of the arena, you can see the animal stalls. Um, um, there's four of them, and you can see walking through them is Elisa. But they seem kind of empty, like most of the animals are down towards the other end, and you see Elisa walking through them. Okay, Sh does she see us? No, she does not. Let's quietly follow her. Ooh. I am not stealthy as a rock gnome, but I am stealthy as a gaseous form, so I become one. All right. I'm pretty stealthy. Okay. Um, I just want to pretend like I'm, I'm just kind of looking around, so I'm being nonchalant rather than sneaky. Okay, so those of you that are sneaking, roll stealth, and I guess performance for the nonchalantness? Badly. Okay, um, so my nonchalantness um, is a 33. <laughs> you look like you are... My stealth is a 22. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Level 13! <laughs> you know how normally when you're, when you're being nonchalant, you've got to kind of like lean against something just kind of slyly? I'm leaning, somehow leaning against, leaning against something about five feet away i'm just kind of like almost at a right angle just leaning casually and somehow pulling it off yeah you look very casual very extremely casual bitch what did you roll oh me oh i'm not uh sneaking at all uh, i'm gonna go up to the roof as a gas and float just beneath the ceiling as a 
missed. Yeah, that works. <laughs> that, that tracks. She can notice me if she wants. I'm, I don't look like Pidge, though. Um, um, okay, so you all are being extremely sneaky and very chill. Um, so if anybody passed by, they would not see two, they would not see, um, a monist or pitch. They would see gas and then they see someone that looks like they're leaning kind of weird, but in a cool way. So they're yeah. just going to let them be new vertical napping challenge. Um, <laughs> planking. I said it. Yes. Uh, so as you are. Following along behind Elisa, you see her enter into the back entrance of the Big Top tent. Are you going to follow her in? Yes. Okay. Um... I think if I'm committing to the leaning against things method, then I've got to kind of like lean and then shuffle my feet and then <laughs> lean again and shuffle my feet. <laughs> It probably takes about twice as long as it reasonably needs to, <laughs> but I look good the entire way. Yes, you look very chill, like this is ex exactly what you are supposed to be doing, and exactly where you are supposed to be at. <laughs> okay, so as you walk into the big top, you see a couple of different people. Uh, you see a couple of acrobats, one of them is an elf and one of them is a tabaxi, hanging on the silks. In the center of the arena, off to the side, you see someone dressed in an obscene amount of sparkles um, and some tights and like a leotard who looks like she's reading from a book and gesturing. And then you see someone petting a um, what looks to be a cat that's on fire. That's unusual. It's a, uh, does it seem to be in pain? No, just it seems to be on fire. Um, if you want to roll, would this be nature or animal handling to identify nature? Nature. Let's do a nature check. All right. 12. <laughs> Nat one. <laughs> uh, six. I am way too nonchalant for paying attention to anything else that's going on. Yes, you, you do not. You don't notice the cat on fire. Mendax, uh, Pidge, you think the cat is legitimately on fire, and um, Monist, you know that this is an <laughs> what's called an ember cat, and that's literally a cat made of fire from the Fey realms, and you don't tend to see them here that often, um, really rarely, but this one seems to be just kind of sitting and chilling next to um, its owner or who you would assume to be its owner slash handler. Do I really think the cat's on fire, like, gonna die? I, <laughs> like... I think you're concerned, but I think you you don't, you think it's, like, magical fire, not, like, it's gonna die fire, because oh. it's not, like, freaking out. Okay. Um, okay, okay. Instead of it okay, so I don't like... <laughs> being made of fire. Okay. So I don't get water on it real right. fast. That's good. <laughs> yes, because that could be bad. Um, you also see yeah. sitting in the stands, just kind of observing, is Elisa. What do you think, Mendax? I think that a cat on fire is really awkward because it probably doesn't like being on fire, but also if you throw water on it, it's not going to be happy then either. <laughs> uh, a weird dichotomy. Amonist will uh, fill in Mendax on what he knows about fire cats. Oh, so, oh, uh, the good sort of on fire. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm caught up to speed. Like, that bitch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, and you also, Amonis, you know that this is a relatively young one. Um, they can get bigger. It's about the size of a house cat. Okay. Aww. Oh, that, okay. All right. Um, so... Pidge can't say this out loud, but she's wondering to herself if this is why there were scorch marks on the fence. Hmm. And maybe her friends are thinking something similar. It wasn't before. No, uh, Mendax is thinking whether he could get away with having you go on the trapeze. You're a bard. <laughs> yeah. You That's probably why I'm confident. could. <laughs> well, while he's on the trapeze, I guess... Uh... Does it look like the acrobats on the silks, the elf, and the tabaxi 
are practicing on the trapeze? Like, are they are they up on the silks? They're... It does look like they're doing some movements, but also they're just kind of stopping and sitting. And they're sitting with the silks wrapped around their legs and their legs in, like, the splits. And it, you would assume it would be very uncomfortable, but they look super comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> what would Mendex do? <laughs> would you join them? I think he would probably need a discussion with the puppet first, um, just to see what it thinks. So he's gonna, go, he's just gonna kind of hold up the puppet, say, "Do you want to go on the trapeze?" The puppet goes, "Well, I'd love to, but your hand's right up my jacksie right now, so I think I'm a bit tied up." <laughs> they just stare at each other. You're not helpful, you know that. Well, your hand's cold. <laughs> Okay. It's a tenuous relationship. It's it's still new. <laughs> so they haven't you, quite gotten used to each other yet. Are you gonna walk over to the trapeze and? Yeah, he's gonna attempt small talk because he's probably quite good at that. Much better than the player is. <laughs> okay. Um. Do you have something specific that you say? Um. You have a female tabaxi and a male high elf. Hey, have you seen my puppet? It's really rude. The, the, yeah. The tabaxi um rolls down head over um head over her heels and stops about a foot from the ground and she says, "You have a puppet? I have a friend who has a puppet. Does your puppet do acrobats?" And up from top you hear, "You can ask me yourself, you weird cat." Up from high you you hear the male elf say, it's acrobatics, not acrobats. Yeah, <laughs> puppet probably does do acrobats. Um. <laughs> um, oh, and the the female tabaxi. Now that you're closer to her, um, you notice that she's wearing a lot of sparkles, um, but her fur seems to change between black and white, depending on which angle you're looking at her. Oh, I like your fur. I, I I can probably do that. Hang on. Because I'm, I'm a changeling, so I can just change my hair to do the exact same thing. I was like, how does this look? Oh, it can't looks see. wonderful. Are you here with the circus? Are you are you our new members? Not that I'm aware of. We're just here visiting and doing some detective work. Hi, I'm Mendax, FBI. <laughs> uh, yes, hello. Yes, and we're, and we're also part of the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild. Oh. Fire Breathing Investigations? That's what I said. <laughs> Yes. Oh, um, yeah, so you must be here about, uh, about, I forgot my own character's name. That happens a lot. What did I name her? This is ah. why I always make up the names in the moment. <laughs> I, ha I have- You've made up Cecilia twice. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Spelled differently. <laughs> um, you must be here about Teresa's missing animals, right? Among other things. Oh, well, uh, Teresa's the one with the flaming kitty cat, so um, I tend to stay over here, you know, fur, glitter, hairspray, fire. Not a great combination, um, but she's very friendly, and she looks over, and you see Teresa look over at you, and she's kind of, like, scowling. <laughs> <laughs> That's the high elf? Uh, no, the high elf is still up in the rafters. That is the... Oh. Um, ranger that is over by the fire cat and she's an i'm gonna say this wrong an asimar oh the sparkly dressed person reading from the book and gesturing or the person petting the cat? person petting the cat mm -hmm. oh and now that you're in the arena you can tell that the person that is reading the book is um she seems to have she seems to be made of earth um her skin ten looks very um kind of dark but it also kind of is speckled and there's some stones kind of embedded in and her hair um is like a sand color and it seems like it's kind of falling off and being absorbed by her body uh, so she is an earth genasi the female tabaxi looks at you and looks at your puppet and says oh um my name is brave mark do you have a name is she talking to the puppet yes well, yeah, but we only just met, so you can call me... Did you give me a name yet? Well, no, I was waiting for you to tell me your name. 
Well, that's not how this partnership works. Okay, we'll work on it. Uh, we'll workshop names and come back to you. How's that sound? Oh, that sounds great. Uh, did you want to try? I can ask Kieran, and Kieran, and she's pointing to the high elf. Um, I can ask Kieran if uh, you can get on the silks. Uh, I'm I'm still technically like an apprentice, so I can't say yes, but he could say yes. Uh, Amonis yeah, pulls a fun. levitating rope out of his backpack loops a foot through it and levitates up towards where Kieran is. Whoa. Brave Mark is super excited. She's just clapping. Now that's just cheating. <laughs> uh, Kieran looks at you and he's like, okay, this this isn't... I, I mean, we have silks. You, you don't have to be fancy, but do you know any tricks, I guess? Amonis leaps out of his levitating rope, which coils back into a tight coil and springs into his backpack, and lands wrapping around a, a, one of the silks, spiraling around it a couple of times and looping his foot through the bottom and hanging off of it stripper pole style. Whoa. <laughs> Roll an acrobatics check? Oh, I thought you'd say that. <laughs> I'm really good at that. Mm -hmm. 24. Oh, yes, you do exactly as you described, um, and it looks amazing, and uh, Brave Mark is clapping, and even Kieran looks very impressed, and he asks you, where were you trained? I'm a dex fighter. It's what we do. Ah, uh, of course. I was a fighter once, too, but then I got the call for showmanship, and now I'm here. Uh, and Monus launches into... Uh an explanation of how he can definitely commiserate with that. He's been known to be a little showmanshipy himself um, as he dangles across the silks and uh, <laughs> tries to sidle a little bit closer. Mendax and Pidge, are you guys doing something? <laughs> uh, Mendax is in deep discussion with the puppet as to what the hell his name is, because <laughs> they have not decided yet. But Pidge would like to investigate the stables to see if any of those stalls were fire burned or if it was only the fence okay um so like i'm trying to work out if it was an animal that did this as like part of its maybe it's growing and it's you know maybe yeah. it's about to hit puberty and you know how animals get all angry and aggro when they do that so maybe it took it out on its stall before going for the fence and or maybe someone came in from outside and attacked the fence and stole some animals. In which case, I guess, yes, the stalls would also be burned. I'm, I'm, in, I'm investigating some hypotheses. Uh, so that's a 26 to investigate. Cool. You are very great at investigating. Um, <laughs> okay, so you notice uh, that there are several stalls with different animal names on them, kind of scribbled on sheets of paper. Um, one stall is burnt from the inside, but it almost looks like it's magically contained uh, fire, so Ooh. you can, you assume that, oh, this is probably where that ember cat lives when it's not outperforming. Um, there are some other stalls that have horses. Um, there's a couple stalls. Um, there's one stall in particular that has a baby elephant in it. There's another stall that has um, has droppings from lions and but there are no lions and you also notice that the lock on this stall seems to be broken Ooh, the lock on the lion stall is broken okay i can't tell my friends that because i'm gaseous but i can wander back into the carnival yes tent the big top yeah yes okay amonis you are still um on the silks and you are just having a grand old time. Kieran is actually smiling. Um, and he asks you, do you know any cool doubles tricks? I can't do them with Brave Mark yet because she's still um, enthusiastically novice. Ah, of course. <laughs> uh, how much do you trust me? Well, with your training, I suppose can't go too terribly wrong. And I mean, that's why we have, uh, well, our healer, um, she tends to stick around and pop up if something goes horribly wrong. So let's do it. Jump and grab my hand. Okay, he does that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to make you roll for that. Um, okay, okay, so he does that and he jumps and grabs your hand. He So we link arms and then loop 
our feet together through the bottom and then roll together like a yo-yo down the uh this the silk stopping about a foot off the ground suddenly before and everyone gasps and thought we were about to oh. hit the ground yeah i'll let your wow. previous roll lie it was high enough um yeah Yes, and everybody is very impressed. Uh, Brave Mark is clapping. Even uh, Clissa seems to be, um, the storyteller seems to stop reading from her book, and she kind of looks over and she's, you know, clapping. And Teresa, who was kind of scowling, even she has a little bit of a smile on her face. What what does Kieran's face look like? Kieran, um, if someone could be in love with meeting someone for 30 seconds that's what his face looks like he's very happy and very relaxed and super excited um and he actually looks at you and he says uh are are you looking for a job because we could use another (laughs) acrobat and modus looks back at him and says maybe if it's if if it's beside you reaches (laughs) out a hand to pull him back up towards towards the top of the silks whoa Do you want to be left alone for a bit? <laughs> <laughs> we might. <laughs> um, uh, if the GM was better at flirting in real life, this would go better. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's what the dice are for. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know what this would be. Um, <laughs> and I'm not even a bard. Roll charisma, I guess? You don't need to be. <laughs> I really need to be a bard. All right, let me see. <laughs> Straight uh, can charisma I check. Attempt to use the help action with the puppet, who just goes, <laughs> "Get a room already." Yes. Technically counts as helping. Okay. I like it, and Set. I will give you a point of inspiration for that because that's a handy use of a puppet. He says all the things <laughs> I don't. I have a plus one for charisma. Oh, well, the first roll was a seven, but the second roll was a nat twenty. Hey. Nice! Yeah, 20 celebration dance! Um, okay, so Kieran is very much so in love with you. Um, and Aww. you can just tell. He's just like, he's like, let's do more doubles tricks. This is great! Sure. <laughs> and Monus taps a button on his uh, leather armor and it transforms into a, a spandexy, like, acrobatic suit. Um, and as we're doing acrobatic tricks uh, during a break, I look over at him and say, so, uh, do you ha- you must have a lot of insight being up above the crowds and looking down at everything. Do you have any idea what's been going on here? Uh, no, I do know that uh, Teresa lost some lions, but we didn't. Someone stole them, we're assuming, because we couldn't find them. Um, but there has been a another dragonborn running around, and he's been here. A lot, and I don't know. I like we see Dragonborn, and like everybody comes through, and we love everybody to come through um, our our circus, and we love seeing everybody. But this Dragonborn has just been here every day, and he just runs away when I try to talk to him. Hmm. Do you think you could point him out if you spot him again? Oh, of of course he. Um, he, uh, you know, uh, Elisa is gold, um, but he's, he's like a weird emerald green color. That's one of the things I love about you. You're so observant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to break his heart when you leave. Um, I might take him with me. <laughs> uh, he, um, just kind of smiles. And as you guys continue to do acrobatics, um, Pidge, are you still misting around? Yes. Okay. But now I'm misting in the circus tent. Yes. All right. I would like to check this time for the person who's reading a book and gesturing. I want to see what book they're reading. Okay. Um, so is it okay if I roll some kind of check to see if I can just like catch a glance of what's going on in that book? Perception? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay that's not that bad it's not a one it's an 11 <laughs> oh yeah that's plenty um you can see um that the title of the book is called 1001 stories and you can kind of tell that like there's been scribbles all around the margins 
um, as well as like printed things, printed lines. Mm. Um, and as you see her gesturing, uh, her gestures are kind of more of like, come one, come all. Like she's running lines. Mendex, are you still arguing with your puppet? Um, not right now, because we have reached an agreement. It may not stick, this agreement, but at the moment we have reached one. So we have both decided, and he looks like pointedly at the puppet, that his name is going to be Pippin. Pippin the Puppet. Pippin the Puppet. I love yeah. it. Do you... Now, can we change your name? No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can do, but I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, so Brave Mark looks at you, and she's like, Ooh, Pippin, that's a wonderful name. It would be a really great show name, too. Uh, we've recently lost some people at the circus, um... That's kind of why uh, Teresa seems like a little bit of a grumpy pants over there. Um, but we could really use some more actors and performers. I mean, not to brag, but we did like completely nail a high school talent contest not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has to start somewhere, and we love training new people. I mean, while Pippin is probably a bit too ambitious with this, we do actually have you know, quite a lot of previous gigs, and I like being paid. And these other ones pay a lot more, so uh, we'll get back to you. Oh, of course. Stop volunteering for things. This is how we got into the fire department. You... <laughs> You're very flammable. You... Sorry, we've got, <laughs> some... we've got some issues to work out. Some puppet arguments going on over there. <laughs> All right. Um, so speaking of missing animals and Teresa's petting this fire, so it, has Pidge ever seen one of these cats before? Has Pidge gone because to it, the Feywilds? In the Feywilds, I didn't see one of these when I was there. Okay. Uh, um, <clears throat> so you haven't seen, you've maybe seen one in a pet shop before, but they're extremely mm -hmm. rare in the normal um on a on a scale of like lions and cats on fire, which one is rarer? Cats on fire. Okay, okay. So it's weird that like anybody else thinking it's weird that the lions were stolen and the cat on fire wasn't. So Pidge is still a gaseous form, but now she's over near the cat on fire, <laughs> and I'm gonna try to observe and get clues from Teresa and the cat on fire. Are they interacting? Like, with positive reinforcement, where when the cat presses a button, she gives it a treat? Or does she have a whip and she's like, yeah, perform, beast? Which one? She does have a whip curled up on her hip, but she is just feeding this cat, like, wood chips. Um, and the cat is <laughs> eating them and they're bursting into flame. And the cat is um, purring, but it sounds more like wood popping. <laughs> so this is a happy cir circus animal. Yes. Like this is not a, a mistreated. Okay. No. All right. Good to know. Yes. Amonis, are you still flirting with Kieran? Oh, we're way past flirting. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I found where I'm sleeping at night. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. All right. Um, is there anything else you guys would like to do within the circus tent? Not so many people around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Amonis is staying here. What do the rest of you want to do? Um, we'll just keep chatting to the the shimmery tabaxi and just kind of say, so this whole missing animal and keeper stuff, you don't know anything about it, do you? Because that's kind of what we're here for, and things would go a lot quicker if you happened to know exactly what was going on and told us. Uh, roll a persuasion check for me. While he does that, Imonis is climbing to the top uh, that he can of uh, his area he can reach and keeping an eye out for a green dragonborn. Cool. Twenty six. Twenty six. Okay. Um. So Brave Mark looks at you, uh, and she looks very hesitant, but she also just kind of sneaks a glance over. At Alyssa, and she just kind of like is like bend down, bend down, um, and she goes, "Well, 
you you do know how this runs, right? Like how how the fair runs. Did 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 Elisa tell you? Well, I'll know as soon as you tell me. Um. Well, uh, her voice was higher. Uh, there's there's this crystal thing. Um, I don't know where she moved it to. Uh, because after the break in on the office, it had to be moved. Um, but everybody's joy when somebody is happy and has joy it powers up the crystal which powers up our fair and our circus which then eventually once we have a surplus goes back to the fey wilds but when you have not as many happy people then it doesn't power anything exactly and that's kind of why we don't have a lot of people and we're trying very hard to make everybody happy, but with the animals going missing and with her, um, with, uh, Teresa's sister going missing and just kind of poofing. I mean, people go missing. That's the, mm-hmm. we, li- we live in the Feywilds. Um, but it's it just not, not like this. Wait, 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 wait. So this sister was the animal keeper then, or is it an entirely yeah. different missing person? No, it was that we're uh, only just finding about now. No, Teresa has a sister, um, and her name is Rebecca, and she um, helped keep take take care of the animals. So the ember cat, the lions, the elephants, but the lions went missing too, which is really strange because it's really hard to kidnap lions, uh, and hmm. we normally can like track them and find them easily. You know, following the screams of people as they see the lions. Uh, <laughs> If we, if they just seemed to just vanish, uh, and that was kind of the same night that Rebecca vanished, but Rebecca wouldn't just like steal something. She, she loves Teresa. She loves, she loves the circus. Well, maybe not. And she has keys to lion locks. Hmm. All looking and, very suspicious. I'm going to need she's a new an animal hat. handler. She knows how to transport the lions. Yeah, but she wouldn't have smashed the lock. She would have just unlocked it. Unless she was trying to make it look like somebody else stole them. Very true. <laughs> she might have smashed the lock. <laughs> hmm. Interesting, interesting. Maybe maybe the Ember Cat saw something. I, I mean, um, it's pretty well bonded to Teresa. I Again, I'd stay away. Hairspray and fire, not, not a great, great plan. Um... And, I mean, it's very... It wouldn't go anywhere without Teresa, which is why it's probably still here and not stolen with the lions. Um, But, I mean, you you can try to see if you can communicate with it. Um, But good luck. Okay, team, how do we do this? Communicate with an ember cat? Well, it was with Teresa, so it probably didn't see anything. Um, But I like the idea of looking for this green dragonborn guy. So you can try to communicate with it if you want, and then we'll go look for the Dragonborn? Yeah, I mean, I mean we're here for that. I do have an idea for the Green Dragonborn as well. Um, so if we can just kind of ha- see if we can communicate in some way with a cat, then we can wander off and go, go stalk a Dragonborn. All right, do you have anything to communicate with cats? I don't know what bards do. You guys are very versatile. If not, I can turn it into a person. <laughs> mm, I like that. Um, I don't have anything specific, but depending on what languages the cat understands, we might be in luck. <laughs> Roll animal handling for me. Uh, 14. You, f- as you get closer to the cat, you feel a presence, sort of, in the back of your mind. Like a low background hum. Um, and as you approach Therese, Teresa, um, she kind of looks at you and she, then she looks at the ember cat and she's just like, Can I help you? Yeah, Men's oh. Action Spinner, <laughs> FBI, Fire Breathing Investigations. <laughs> We're here to investigate a disturbance which included the disappearance of several large felines and we were just following a path of inquiry, if that's all right with you. Ah, um, so you must be here for E over here. Um, 
Yeah, if, if, um, how much do you guys know about Ember Cats? Uh, she asks you. Well, I'm afraid that's classified, but needless to say, very little. Okay, um, so you might want this. So she hands you, um, she takes off a bracelet from her hand, and it's in, it has, um, like quartz, but quartz that's been colored bright flaming orange, and it's just like a leather wristlet. Um, she says, uh, Put this on. All right. I, I, I do it. And immediately you hear... Let's see if I can do this voice. Who are you? And it's in your brain. I'm your new best friend, buddy. Uh, 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 are, are you here to find my friends? The, the big cats that don't set things on fire? Actually, yeah. Yeah, we are. Oh, wonderful. Uh, and so you now know that ember cats can communicate telepathically. That is useful. Yes. Um, which helps in the training of them. Uh, so are, are you here to stop the, the weird guy that came through? He looked like a lizard and I tried to eat him, but it didn't work. Oh, well, that green dude. Yeah, we're going for him next. Do you want to come? Be fun. You might get to eat him. Uh, I I would, but we we have a show tonight, and I want well, I mean once Kieran's done, if if Kieran is uh, Teresa's friend, I'll, I'll look, look from the looks of him, he'll be like forty five minutes to an hour, so we, I think we've got time. <laughs> yeah, um, but I can't really leave Teresa. But if you bring him back here, I can eat him for I'll our show. Sure, you can. It's yeah. <laughs> union mandated breaks. R roll. Wait, are the carnivals unionized? No? Are they? No. Uh, <laughs> no, they are not. It's up to you. No, they are not. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll we'll put that on the list of things to do. Did I think I would have to think if they were unionized or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> things the DM didn't plan for. <laughs> um, if you want to do a persuasion check, and I guess I will contest it with uh, the bard smiles, <laughs> right? <laughs> with a perception check, is that how I can contest that? I don't know if there's a good skill to contest persuasion. Um, um, usually you do like insight, insight. or maybe okay. like a charisma saving throw or something. Yes, yeah. yes, I will do insight. But unless it's above a 29, I don't think. <laughs> it's not going to be. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not going to be. There's no way. Stats are not high enough. Okay, uh, so E looks at you and is like, uh, could, can you give the bracelet back to Teresa for a second? Yeah, yeah, sure. And I, I hand it over. Uh, Who and wants she to talk to you? She takes it and... They look like they're having a very serious conversation, like staring each other down. And finally, Teresa's like, ugh, fine, as long as you have him back by the time for the show. I mean, we don't really need to practice anyways, especially with, you know, Kieran the ring hog. Mm. Oh, he might be a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, he, and she hands you back the bracelet, and he's like, okay, let's go. Nice. Okay, buddy. Hop on my shoulder. Let's go. Um, if he hops on your shoulder, I'm gonna need you to do a constitution saving throw. I'm going to do that because <laughs> Mendax is probably not thinking that far ahead. Let's go. Um, how does a 17 grip you? Yeah, it's hot, um, but it doesn't burn you. But it's very, you get very sweaty very fast, but he's happy to just sit there on your shoulder. Nice. Am I still up in the rafters? Yes. Um, okay, what are you doing so. up in the rafters? Actually, Naughty can you... Naughty things. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to have you roll a perception check, um, and you can do that with disadvantage if you would like. If you oh, are okay. making out with my high elf acrobat. Ma maybe you should roll a constitution oh, yeah, We're doing acrobatics that are just getting more and more handsy and just, yeah, you know, that like Light of heaving hand? chest kind of breathing. Yes. <sighs> Yes. Yeah, that. <laughs> yes. Um, and at this point... I got point, an eight. Oh, you haven't... <laughs> He's not paying very much attention at all yeah, for some reason. You don't notice anything. You notice Kieran. It's Kieran. 
Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Brave Mark has been... Uh, so the Earth Genasi, that pitch that you saw reading and that everybody saw reading from the book, has um, subtly pulled Brave Mark to the side to look at the book instead of the silks. <laughs> Oh, Everyone's just trying okay. not to watch. And it's just um, like, look at this I, book. I, I also um, find myself going with the cat and the bard and the puppet out okay. of the tent to go find a lizard. I'll leave them. You guys can have a... He's so dexterous, I say, and leaves. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> okay, so Amonis is um, tied up, and yeah. you guys walk out of the big top. Um, are you where are you going to go? You have the food stalls, you have the wares, um, you have game row, jousting, the fighting arena. Um, I want to talk to the um ember kitten and be like, so where did you see the 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 green scaly dude last? Oh well, he came into the he came into the stalls. Um, but he was very friendly. He fed me some fish. It was really good. Uh, but I mean. I've seen him kind of everywhere when I'm walking around with Ter- Teresa. Um, he seems to just kind of pop into the wares quite a bit because, you know, there's quite a lot going on. Um, we have a lot of stuff to sell. All right. Um, we could always try over there first. Okay. Pidge is going to do one last check to see if Amonist is done. Uh, with the... Is somebody going to actually notify me that you're leaving? Yeah, I'll, I'll float up to you and, and for some reason... Uh... You see a cloud next to you up in the rafters. <laughs> in in the shape of the words, are you done? Okay, I think I definitely noticed that. Yeah, I mean, you, you would notice a random cloud floating in the rafters, yes. Ah, I, I uh, say something sweet to, to, to Kieran and drop down the silk and trot out of the, out of, out of the building. Um, Kieran still hangs out on the silks, but... He's like waving and saying, come back, come see the show. I call back, baby, you are my show. <laughs> and then he falls. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> literally falls in love. Cool. Uh, all right. So you leave the tent and you all, are you fl- following the mist and the puppet and the flaming cat? Uh-huh. Wonderful, wonderful. So you guys walk over to the wares. So the wares, they have... Ooh, I would like to be about 300 feet in the air. Okay, so you are a floating cloud. Yeah, don't mind me. Just a cloud <laughs> floating through. Um, okay, so from above, you see what look like quickly built shelters um, and just stalls. And you can see people kind of darting between them. And as you guys walk into the stalls, you see everything. There's an armory. There's a potion shop. There are craft items. There's weapons. There's um, also, as you walk further in, if I have this, you see a shop labeled Magical Item Wheel of Fortune. I make my way hmm. straight towards that. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Me too. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get this big. As you walk up, a shopkeeper uh, welcomes you and says, Welcome to the Magical Item Wheel of Fortune. My name is Aaron, and I am the owner of the Wheel of Fortune. And basically, and he looks at you guys, and he kind of puts his hand to the side, and he's like, My parents are rich. So I use their stuff to get rid of stuff. It's fine. And then he looks back and he's like, no, it's a wonderful show. Do you want to take a spin on the Wheel of Fortune? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Pidge degasses and and walks forward. Suddenly there's a rock gnome. (laughs) Oh, hello. Uh, That was very cool. You just kind of appeared. You'll have to teach me that sometime so I can sneak out of my house. No, it's a lot of fun at the circus. (laughs) Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to roll me a D100. So you're going to roll the percentile dice and then the D10 and tell me what you get. I got an 87. 82. 32. 32. Okay. So for the 32, you get a, you see, you spin the wheel and it lands on what looks like an axe and it magically appears on the ground in front of you. And you and he looks at you and he's like, huh, I did not peg 
you with the puppet to be one for weapons, but uh, here you go, and you now have a vicious great axe. Yay! I'm Yay. sure I can use this to cut cake or something. <laughs> okay, uh, Amonis, <laughs> remind me of your roll. Sorry, I think it was, it was 87. Let 87. me just verify. Yes. 66. I have to do some math here. Yay, math! Amonis loves math. Go to school, kids. <laughs> I was reading the wiki entry for D&D, so I'm like, I've never actually been taught about D&D. I've only learned it from friends. Like, what do we officially tell people D&D is? And it is officially a war game simulator <laughs> with math elements and role playing. <laughs> That's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's what we do, folks. <laughs> we do war games. Yes, yeah, so we do math. <laughs> Um, so you see it lights up and a red light pops from the wheel after you spin it. And you, when it stops, it stops on a scroll and the scroll kind of flashes a couple different colors before finally settling on red. And out on the ground in front of you is a rolled up red scroll. Do you unroll it? I do. And on it is it's a scroll of inflict wounds, so you can use it to cast the spell inflict wounds once. And um, Aaron looks at you and he says, "Huh, didn't peg you for a violent one, but such is the way of the wheel." I'll and take it. Pidge, w you rolled an eighty. Eighty-two. Eighty-two. So five less than that one. Sweet. Okay, so you also you um, pull on the wheel and it spins, and as it spins, it also lands on the scrolls, but this time when it's done flashing, it ends up flashing like a blue-gray color, and another scroll appears in front of you. Ooh, ooh, I pick it up. And you now have a scroll of Cloud of Daggers, um, so you can cast that spell once with the scroll. Ooh, I... Stealth check it into a monist's bag. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you get? <laughs> you got a scroll of cloud of daggers. <laughs> All right. All right. Yes. Um, yep. And so then Aaron looks at you and he says, first roll's free, but you can roll again for 10 gold pieces. Wait, only 10? We're going to be here all day. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Well, eventually I'm going to run out of juice because you know the thing with the crystal, but it's all fine here. I'll roll oh, again. Oh, yeah, what thing about the crystal? Huh? Oh, so you know we're all dying. Wait, what? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Come again? I don't want to roll again if it's going to kill these guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does that uh, do something bad? Um, he says, well, I, I mean, okay, so we signed this contract with the Fae when we join, and it's a lot of fun, and it pisses mom and dad off, but it's a lot of fun. And we... um. <laughs> We have to return to the Feywild every now and again if we can't get the crystal up to snuff, uh, because the crystal is what powers this entire place, um, and it kind of helps us from having to, you know, spend money on things like food or drink, and it just kind of keeps us running. Um, of course, we're- Axes of vicious mockery, yeah. Yeah, so um, if we can, uh, I mean, we can leave at any time once our contract is up, or sometimes even before our- the Fae that we made the contract with is very friendly. Um, but if the crystal runs out, then the fair is done for... I, I, it's like, you know, five, six years before we can get it back and running um, after charging in the Feywild. So we do try to keep it. Um, so it's 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 an, it's an a death, but, you know, not not like a deathy death. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, for, what do they call that? Furlough? A furlough. Kind of, yes. Hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm gonna not roll the wheel again and talk to my friends. Hey, friends. Yeah? Um, do you want me to go back up in the air and search for the green dragonborn from the sky? I was gonna do that, and then I got distracted by the wheel, and then, uh... <laughs> sure. Okay. I mean, it might, might, might not be that difficult to find him... I mean, you there are stick out. probably aren't that many green dragonborns around. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, I, do you wanna... uh, I, 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 I just turn to the um, the person running the wheel and just go, you see any green dragonborns around? Oh, uh, 
Yes, yes, we have. Um, He's behind me, isn't he? <laughs> no. Uh, but uh, he he did wipe out our game row. Um, he won quite a bit of stuff the other day. It was really rather impressive. I mean, he even he even beat um our uh card game players. Uh oh, what did they call themselves this time? They called themselves the uh oh, they change their name all the time, you know. I mean, card players, they're kind of Mm, loop de loo. Oh, uh, geo and thermal. That's what they decided to call themselves. Kind of loony, if you ask me. No, they're not loony. But this is a wonderful place. Uh, do you want to take another spin on the wheel? Ah, I'm all right. We we've got some uh rando to stalk. Alrighty. Uh, if I see him, I guess I could point him in your direction. Uh. Uh, no, no, that's all right. Or um, yes, I'll tell you what. If you see him again, just um. Put maybe a, a small kind of, he just gestures towards a random item, uh, like a vase or something. Mm -hmm. Just put that um, at the, the edge of your desk. And then if we see that, we'll know you've seen him. And okay. then we'll get more details off you. Got to got to be careful about this one. He just kind of tweaks his nose and goes. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, of course, I know. Uh, well, come again to the Wheel of Magical Fortune. You're a weird <laughs> Will do. All right, so let's walk through these shops and look at like jewelry for sale and, and stuff like that and recap. So we've got some keys are missing, the animal stalls, and the sale barn. What was a sale barn? What's is that like? Um, uh, that's the show arena. I might have said sale barn. Um, okay, so that's the circus tent, the big top, or the that's where it was burned. The, like, fence that was burned. The square arena that was burned. Oh, so that's the key that was missing? Yes. The... Yes. I might have oh, said okay. show barn. I meant to say show arena or sale barn. Um, okay, got it. Same thing happens there. Okay. And then a fence had scorched woods. We had acrobats on silk. Kieran, the high elf, and Brave Mark, the tabaxi, with black and white fur. Clissa was a sparkly dressed earth genasi reading from a book. Teresa's sister is missing. So... Maybe what we should do is go back to the animal stalls. I could polymorph one of the animals that was still there, like a baby elephant, into a person, and then we could ask him for details to see if this green guy was the person who broke the lock on the lion's stall and kidnapped Rebecca. You guys want to do that? Okay. Um. Yeah, we can do. Anybody have any other ideas, too? I'm open to... We could... Uh, set a trap for this green dragonborn and ask him ourselves. Yes. Where would we trap? I mean, this is a circus. There are probably quite a lot of cages around here. Yeah. So... You know he likes the circus. Yes. So we'll s start with the animal place, and then while we're there, turn one of those stalls into a trap? Yeah, it seems as likely as any other. Maybe if we... If we have something really rare and oh, he didn't take the cat. I don't know, but maybe if, they, if we have some kind of bait in our trap, what could we put in there? I, I'm glad you asked because um, I uh, can. Well, I'm not going to right now, but I have the ability to cast minor illusion, so I can I can make myself look like a sexy lady dragonborn. Okay, just uh. All right, are you guys headed back to? We head to the. Animal stall? Yeah, and we're gonna- I just wanna ask, cause it might- it might not be the same person who stole the lions and Rebecca as is- has been seen around here. It might be, but it might not be, so it'd be easy to check with a baby elephant. I imagine they're still pretty tall. Yes. I can see who could- yeah. So I just wanna ask the baby elephant real quick. Um, so, I guess- uh, so we're in the animal stall place, you guys? Are you guys good with that? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, so you guys go back to the animal stalls. Um, you see the elephant just kind of hanging, um, drinking some water, eating some hay. All right. I can't talk to elephants, but I can talk to loxodons. So can I turn the elephant with a polymorph spell? Can it make a wisdom saving throw? So Pidge gets out her fanny pack, which she reaches into. She pulls out from the fanny pack a very large spell book, which seems like it couldn't fit in there, and also a caterpillar cocoon. She takes the caterpillar cocoon and uh, rubs it with her thumb like um, a, a lucky stone. And 
whispers some stuff while reading the spell book. Does the elephant <laughs> the elef- make a wisdom saving the throw? The elephant got yeah. an eight on its wisdom saving throw. <laughs> it becomes a loxodon, an elephant person okay. who can talk. Cool, because DM had no idea what that was. Um, all right. Uh, so the elephant kind of looks at you and is like, can I help you? Hello. Do you remember your friend Rebecca? Or was she your friend or not? I don't know. Do you remember Rebecca? Well, I guess. She always gave me, like, totally cool hay. And now that she's gone, I only get, like, half of it. And then I have, like, oats, but... Oh, that's terrible. Do you, um... Remember when she left? When was the last time you saw her? She was running around with her mate, I guess. I don't know. She seemed to, like, hold hands with this dude, and sometimes he would feed me, but it was totally, like, wrong, so that way she could leave early. He was kind of weird colored, though. Oh, what color? Like, like, trees? He was the same shade as, Mm. like, trees. The barky part or the leafy part? The the yummy part, the the, the leaves. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> That's so cute that the elephant thinks of it as leaf color. <laughs> All right. Um, did they smash that lock on the lion's gate? I point to the lock. Yeah, it was kind of weird because like she's never done that before. But whatever. And then they just kind of left. But as long as I don't have to share attention with those two, they're very needy. Thank you so much for your help. Um, Do you want to remain a loxodon for an hour, or would you like to go back to being an elephant? Uh, Do you guys have any questions for the baby elephant before? Did the lions leave by choice, or were they sort of kidnapped? I mean, Rebecca promised them, like, some steak dinner. So I don't know... It's, they're not kids, so no. Okay. So yes, they went willingly. <laughs> <laughs> Mendex, any questions for the baby Loxodon? Okay, so Mendex has been kind of like scribbling down everything the loxodon has been saying and just kind of go, okay, um, would you be willing to um, uh, repeat your statement in a court of law should it come up? <laughs> <laughs> like, Like, in a ring like i don't do much i sometimes walk around the field at night and then i like go into the circus tent and have so much fun everybody loves me now what i'm trying to say is um would you be willing to sign this um this affidavit to uh (laughs) say that what you've said (laughs) is fully correct so that if we need to refer to it in a court of law it's fine i guess Sure. Oh my gosh, do you sign it with your hand or with your nose? She takes her trunk <laughs> and do you hand her something to write with? Um, I mean, we can probably just cover the trunk in ink. Okay, and then she just kind of smacks I mean, it. Yeah, or, a, the... or a quill, that works too. <laughs> she just, she just kind of smacks it on the piece of paper and says, I uh, I think that's what you wanted. Yeah, that, that that will do me. Just kind of roll the scroll back up again. Just go, maybe someone's going to do this right. <laughs> Great. Can I, like, go back to what I was now? Because this is yes. kind of weird. Um, Which of the haze did you like best? I really like clover hay, but Rebecca and Teresa says it makes me fat. But if you sneak okay, well, me some... Yeah. <laughs> Totally sneak her just a little bit, not okay. not too much, just a, just a little bit of clover hay. And we, I leave her as the her preferred form of baby elephant with some clover hay. She kind of toots at you and is very happy. <laughs> Aww. You made friends with a soul and teenager. Congratulations. You've solved my soul and teenager puzzle. Oh, <laughs> uh, was she kidnapped here? Did... No. Oops. No. Okay. <laughs> She's just very, very uh, growing up sullen teenager oh i didn't even ask where the mom and dad of the elephant were oops uh oops <laughs> i mean she still seemed very happy um just you know sassy teenager 
All right. Okay. Uh, let me know if they're keeping you here against your will. Uh, bye. <laughs> Um, okay, so you guys just learned some new information. And I have a signed document um, to <laughs> say that everything is accurate. Mendax has been watching a lot of legal plays, so he, he's very into <laughs> legal proceedings now. Okay, um, so what do you guys do next? You still have... Um, last you heard, he was at the game row, um, and then you just heard stuff from the elephant. So what do you want to do next? Uh, I think we just really need to find... Actually, I I don't think we've yet talked to the missing animal handler's sister. Right? You convinced her cat to leave her. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, she but gave like, Mendex a bracelet and then... Yeah, but yeah. like about her sister and like what did they... Did she know about this relationship? Were there any inklings? Mm. Where might her sister go? What's her sister's happy place or safe place? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and we should probably so also ask her why she's not more worried that her sister is missing. That could be helpful. Um, <laughs> so you guys go back to the cir circus tent then? Mm -hmm. This time as a rock gnome. Uh, so as a monist and uh, Mendax and Pidge enter, um, she notices a monist and she kind of looks at you and she's like, y your boyfriend went to his trailer. Um, he's not here. Um, oh, we're here for you. Great. Uh, can I have my cat back? Are you still kind of exploring or? The investigation is still underway, I'm afraid. <laughs> All we cannot then. let our ju junior detective um, loose right now, I'm afraid. He's he's working through his exams. Okay, uh, just make sure you don't feed him ice cream. He's going to say that he wants ice cream, but don't give him ice cream. Uh-oh. <laughs> Mendax, uh, I don't think she likes me very much. I'm going to let you take this. You're very charismatic. Turn on the charm. <laughs> Be slutty. Think like me. Go. <laughs> You're barred. Okay, what you want me to ask? Uh, she notices Pidge and she's like, uh, I haven't seen you around. Uh, can, can I help you? Hi, I'm uh, Mendex's apprentice. I, I look at Mendex expectantly. <laughs> okay, so we've got a number of questions for you to answer, if that's okay with you. Well, I can't really practice, so I guess. And I mean, you know, our boss kind of said that we had to. So, shoot. Question the first. What's the first question we need to ask? <laughs> Does she know about the relationship? Do you know about the relationship between your sister and this weird green dragon dude? <laughs> Rebecca doesn't date. We do animal stuff. We, well, we're too oh, busy. We, we, we're too busy. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Uh, we are too busy taking care of the animals. Family <laughs> show. That That's a bad way to phrase that. Um, <laughs> um, cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> the DM is dying. <laughs> DM is dead. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, what she actually says is, we are too busy taking care of the animals to have <laughs> love lives. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that might not be the case. See, I have this signed declaration from <laughs> one of your exhibitors that they witnessed these two ragamuffins sauntering about holding hands. What say you to that? Who did you talk to? That's neither here talk... nor there. That information is classified uh, well, pending the to... investigation conclusion. If you talk to Geo and Thermal, they're they're liars. I, I hope you know that. Uh, I'm writing but... that down, but no. Okay. Um, I mean, sh sh sure, she, I guess she could have had a relationship without me knowing, but it would be really hard with the kind of work we do we travel all the time uh and it was i i mean honestly she probably just went back home which is why i mean she does stuff like this sometimes 
So you say she probably went back home, yet you don't know for sure? Like, she didn't talk to you before she left? No, I... We kind of got in an argument. I, um... I've been wanting to add... Add a, a dragon to our act, and, um... It didn't go over well with her. Why not? Well, it would take an immense amount of magic to make sure the dragon doesn't grow large, and, um... Dragons are, you have to take them away when they're young in order to bond with them, and she just, that was a little too far for her. Have you considered employing a high-level wizard to cast true polymorph to turn someone into a dragon? Therefore, you don't need to train them. But this isn't the point of the questioning. <laughs> <laughs> he says, remembering uh, why they <laughs> Uh, no, but... I don't train magic. I train animals. Well, maybe that's where you're going wrong. I, she looks a little taken aback, like, okay? Uh... Question the second. <laughs> and Monus whispers to Pidge, aren't bards supposed to be sexy? Yes, they are. This is not and going Pidge well. <laughs> elbows Mendex. <laughs> <laughs> Flirt, <laughs> charm man, be suave. I'm, I'm, I'm pl I'm, hey, I'm playing a character. Just, just go with it. All right. <laughs> There's like a little argument with the FBI. There are different types of charisma. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, 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 she looks at you and she's like, "Do you, do you need a moment?" Uh. <laughs> no, no. I'm just conferring with my legal team. And Monis goes. <sighs> Okay, then. Uh, what else do you need to know? I need to feed um, my animals before the show. Uh, speaking ask of her, animals... Yeah, ask her. Ask her if Rebecca took the lions for any specific reason. Speaking of animals, did Rebecca take the lions for any particular reason? Rebecca didn't take the lions. The cage was broken. Uh, if you'll if you'll look at this uh, lower piece of the document, it specifically <laughs> says that that's what happened. Who did you talk to? Once again, I cannot divulge the identities of my informants. There's this smear of ink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it, they're her. She's free to take them. She doesn't have to. I don't see why she would fake them being stolen. They're her pets. Uh, they don't... Uh, e there uh, really, really likes them, but they're not super huge fans of them, because, uh, you know, the whole on fire thing. So they tend to stay away from me, and, I mean, they're, they're serious. They're hers. Like, her name's on the animal form, uh, so I don't know why she would steal them. She can just take them. They're very well trained. Interesting, interesting. Now, third question. Why aren't your performers unionized? <laughs> uh, I'm not in charge of this show. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know why we're not unionized. We're treated very well. Uh, there, there was another fair that was kind of our sister fair, but something happened and they just kind of stopped this something do you know what it was why they stopped yeah uh i i don't know all i know is i have job security so that's you should ask mendex you should ask if the people not coming to the fair is a recent thing and if so when it started because that's the real problem right is that the yeah. crystal's not getting enough power mm -hmm. yeah 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 okay okay i'll do it all right, final question, as far as I'm aware. We have reports that attendance at your shows has gone down quite significantly compared to what you would like. So what we need to know is, when did this begin to happen? I.e., do you have any graphs or receipts <laughs> you could show us? We want a paper trail. Uh, show us your graphs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have graphs uh but I, this is gonna sound crazy but after that first the, the first night that uh there was there was like a, a dragonborn in the crowd that looked 
beautiful. Uh, his his scales were this, like the color of emeralds. Um, and he, it was a packed house and it was wonderful and everything went perfect. And then the more and more he came, um, he almost became the only one in the audience, which is weird because we haven't really changed much. And I mean, Kieran and and um, the other acrobat is uh, look, working really hard on new tricks. And I just, I, nobody's been showing up. And I just assumed maybe this was just not a great city. And I mean, of course, uh, uh, Lisa would never want to move on before our contract is up. But, you know, I did suggest it. Very interesting. Thank you for your time. And we'll get back to you later. Of course. Uh, just, you know, no ice cream. Wood chips. <laughs> All right, so... Don't worry, Mendax hates ice cream. <laughs> Don't you, Mendax? Yeah, yeah, that's... I famously hate ice cream, he says, <laughs> wiping some ice cream from his lips. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I hate this stuff. I keep trying to get rid of it, but... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of it by eating it. Okay. Uh, what do you guys do next as you leave the tent? Amonis, what are your thoughts? I think we should move towards setting up a trap. It seems like we're just not getting a ton of information. And it seems like everything is centering back on this green dragonborn. I think we need to figure out something to lure him in and get some information directly from the source. Yeah. Oh, uh, can we go find a picture of Rebecca somewhere? Yeah. Well, yeah. So trap is an option, and so is um, like a helicopter search. If this person's been wandering around the fair, then theoretically, if we were all up in the sky, we would see them walking around, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We could also have Rufus smell them out. We know yes, a dragonborn. We, could, uh, yeah. we can tell Rufus to find the other dragonborn. Yes. So let's... Go options. find them. Yeah, so we could wait for them to come to us with the trap, or we could go find them with the Rufus or the Cloud Search options. You're right. I like the go finding them option, because I don't know what we, what we would lure them with. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so are you... What is Rufus sniffing around the circus tent? Are you trying to find Elisa? Let's show Rufus the lock because in the, the animal barn, because mm -hmm. we know they were in there and we're going to say, sniff the dragonborn boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm assuming Rufus has some kind of like sniffing thing. Yeah. Right. Where you can like track people. It's called the nose. Yep. Um, With advantage. Yeah. And there's probably only two dragonborns that were ever in this backstage area. Not the general public, you know, like just right. El Elise, Elisa? Yes. And our green guy. Roll with advantage for, uh, there's, I guess, investigation for Rufus? Is that what his sniffing thing links to? Uh, sure. Uh, 16. Okay. Uh, he picks up a trail and he um, takes off. And he leads you across through the stalls, through the picnic area, down to um, down to the game row. Um, and he kind of he circles a little bit, but he finally ends up in front of a strongman game um, labeled in bright white um, handwriting called High Striker. Uh, and standing next to it is a human man dressed in a, like an old timey, um, strongman outfit. So like a, it's not called a leotard, but like a wrestling. It's a unitard. Unitard. Thank you. <laughs> or no, no. It's called a singlet. Sorry. The singlet. wrestling one. There we go. Yes. The wrestling one. Um, and he's holding a fairly large hammer and he's saying come one come all be the strongest of your friends and win a prize i'll try it Hitch and i look at each other and go no <laughs> <laughs> i'll do it oh step right up young man that'll be one gold piece okay and you can try your hand at hitting the top of this wonderful bell you must just take this hammer 
and hit it, and you will hit the bell if you are strong enough. I do. And I'm guessing strength check? Yes. Uh, 17. Ooh, that's good. Hmm. Well, I young... have a plus eight. <laughs> nice. Well, young man, that was quite the swing. Uh, we do have some awesome prizes available to you if... Um, okay, so if you want to roll a d20. Uh, Yay, prizes. Of course, now I get the 19. Okay. Oh, well, sir, uh, looks like, and he's like digging through a trunk and he pulls out a box and it's like a jewelry box. Um, and he pops open the top and he says, this is the best friend necklace of Carnival. It, if you give it to your loved one, it'll warm whenever they touch the middle of the pendant. And the pendant is like a circle, um, and it's like a yin-yang kind of symbol. And it's mm -hmm. uh, like purple and blue, and in the middle, of course, are the other ones. So he's pointing towards that middle section. And he says once they're wearing it, if you p push on it, then they will warm up. So Aww. you know your loved one's close. Congratulations. And he hands it over. Thanks. Aw, that's so cute. Aw. We'll just not let Kieran see this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's for crud. Aw. Um, yes, and he says, he offers the hammer to Pidge and Mendax, and he says, any takers? Do you want to take a try? Only one gold piece. Yeah, sure, I'll <laughs> give it a go, and I have a, I have an, I have a way to get, through, get around this. So Mendax okay. takes the hammer and visibly struggles with it because on a scale of zero to five of strength, Mendax is a minus one. <laughs> so he kind of like sort of struggles to lift the hammer and just kind of starts to swing it and then just kind of looks over uh, the guy's shoulder and is like, what's that over there? <laughs> uh, I guess roll persuasion? I, I would say it's more of a deception. Deception, yes, that's what I want. Deception. Uh, so that is a thirty-two de deception. <laughs> he looks. What? He's like, what? 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 What's over there? <laughs> uh, Mendax <laughs> swings the hammer down and just kind of so it hits the thing, and he just go makes a ding noise. You go ding. Go, oh, look at that! I did it. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, uh, well, I mean, you have some very strong friends. Uh, and then if you want to roll a d20, and he's going to go back over to the box and start digging for prizes. Well, that was lucky I rolled the... What, what does a one get me? Okay, he holds out um, a wand to you. And this wand... And he says, now this is the wand of Tartuffe. So if you tap it three times onto a flat surface, you can create... And he taps on like a post... And what appears is a cherry tart. Cool. Oh, it's a tart wand. Yes. Yes. Tartuff. Um, so it creates <laughs> 1d6 tarts per day. The type of the That's tart so cool. is up to the person. We are yes. never going uh, hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so then he looks at Pidge and he says, well, uh, this, because the hammer is almost um, as tall as you are, Pidge. And he goes... Oh. I've got something for this, don't worry. And Pidge turns into a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Teeny tiny little arms. <laughs> With teeny tiny little arms. And so although I am a huge sized beast, my teeny tiny little arms should be approximately human sized, which should be perfect for picking up this hammer. <laughs> he kind of holds it out to you and you can see he's kind of shaking like, uh, please don't eat me. <laughs> I lean down my T-Rex head and I blow out of my nose on him, just kind of breathing, but it almost, <laughs> it's hot and sweaty. And I accept, <laughs> I smile. He kind of just wipes it off and <laughs> gestures towards the bell thing. Sweet. And then I have a plus seven to my strength, which is almost as good as a bonus has. That's a 17. <laughs> well, uh, okay. So if you want to roll a d20 again. Oh, Okay. A 19. Oh, okay. So he goes in and he pulls out another best friend necklace box. And he goes, uh, congratulations. Uh, I don't... Do you, and, he offer, and he looks at Amonist and Mendax and goes, uh, 
do, do you guys want to hold this for her? Oh. Do it. <laughs> First, I set the hammer down, and then I shrink back down from being a T-Rex. <laughs> okay. Um, and so he hands you the best friend necklace, and this one is pink and orange. Ah. Uh. Yes, and he goes. Uh, so it warms when you when 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 you touch touch the like. He's very like frazzled. He's like, uh, do do you want to go go again? Uh, uh. And he's just. I just realized I used up their magic, didn't I? When I did that, um, depleted the crystal a little bit. Whoops. But are you having fun? Because if you're having yeah. fun, you added to the crystal. I thought ah. our joy was a good thing here. Yes, joy Amonis is a good is thing. positively gleeful. <laughs> Amonis <laughs> is just pew, crystal power. Uh, so, well, then, the, yes. so, so this wand, does it? What like what does it work on? So what what do I have to tap to? You tap a flat uh, surface, and you get one d six tarts per day. A flat surface. Okay, is it picky about the type of flat surface? Just has to be flat. And how how are we defining flat? Just like a tabletop, Not or can butt. it be like? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's definitely what I'm thinking. Uh, so not a bonus butt, but like the ground, a post, a table. Okay, and it just does can't the, be does, like... does the tart just appear, or does it turn yep, whatever just... it is into a tart? Nope, the tart just appears. Just appears. Okay, okay. I'm j- I was just uh, uh, trying to see how much I can abuse it. Probably not that much. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so the um, gentleman running the game, he's offers the hammer back out, and he's like, "Uh, y- y- you can play again if you want, I suppose. Uh, at least you're having fun." He's still very frazzled from the T Rex. Can I ask a question? Uh, sure. When I investigated him with my sniff, did he sniff like a dragonborn, or did he sniff like a human? He sniffed like a human. Okay. Hmm. Can I... Um, oh, I'm not a Tyrannosaurus Rex anymore. Um, I guess I'll just investigate his pidge. I'll, I'll like, peek my head around. I'm short, and I'm looking around people's knees. Okay. <laughs> Three feet um, tall. Roll... I just want to see if there's... A dragonborn near. Yes, roll investigation. Uh, Amonis, he looks at you and he says, you have such a cute dog. Does he want a treat? Mm, what kind of treat? Uh, and he pulls out a bean. Sure. And he hands it to you to give to your dog, because he is smart and doesn't try to feed random dogs he sees. Mm-hmm. Oh, I- it was only a 13. I probably, I'm just keeping myself busy without doing anything, shall we say? I toss the bean to Rufus. Okay. Does Rufus eat it? Yes. Okay. Rufus is super happy. Um, and you smell the smell of like a perfectly cooked steak. Ah. That's charging up the crystal. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So with your investigation roll, Pidge, you see a crowd gathering off to kind of in an alleyway between two different games. I point it out to my friends. Look, a crowd. I look. Ooh, a crowd. <laughs> I use my levitating rope to go about 50 feet up in the air so I can see over the crowd and see what's going on. Mendax, do you want to hop on this broom of flying with me? I mean, we could just walk into the crowd. It's it's not that big. It's, okay. it, there's, it's still pretty empty as far as a carnival is concerned. Yeah. Mendax declines. Pidge takes her three, she's got two stabs and a broom, she's constantly pitching, pinching her fingers, <laughs> sits on all three of them for ease of sitting. Okay. <laughs> um, could I just tie all three together with like a strap of leather that. or something? You probably <laughs> yeah. could. Yeah, I have mega pole. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. you do. <laughs> uh, which is a broom of flying and two stabs tied together. Okay, so you fly over... Um, and you see, th- uh, do you guys know what three card Monty is? Only vaguely. Okay. Um, so you see a, <clears throat> you see two Earth Genasis, um, and they're kind of dressed in like shining gold and chains and fancy, um, and they have a table spread out in front of them, and they have a, they have three cards in front of them, and uh, sitting across from them on the table is a hooded figure. 
and the crowd is joining because the hooded figure seems to be winning a lot. Mm-hmm. Can we see any skin? Can we see any more of this? Ooh, yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. Um, can we see any more of this hooded figure? Um, roll... Roll a perception check for me. Oh, I got a nat 20. Oh, well, that's useful. You, okay, so you see, um, what did the rest of you roll, actually, before I... I got a nine, so probably not okay. that much. Mendax doesn't see this. Uh, seven. Neither does Pidge. Um, okay, so with your nat 20, you see a sparkling shimmer around the cloak of this um, person who's sitting across the table. Um, and it seems to be, it makes, you know, like in the desert when you see like heat come up and you get mirages. Yeah. That's kind of the vibe it's giving off with sparkles. Um, so it's a good guess that he is hiding something. Interesting. If only I were more magical, I would probably be able to tell more. <laughs> um, Mendax, you're still on the ground. Do you approach the table? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll cut through uh, the crowd and just kind of part the part the waves just start making my way up to the the table um, with my puppet and uh ember kitten in tow uh so one of the um earth genasi sitting on the t- sitting behind the table they uh pop up and they say oh hello a new new wager ah uh, do you want to join us you bet you but i do wonderful wonderful sit down next to our friend and he says friend with like a lot of disdain like he really wants this person to leave uh and he looks at you and he says how familiar are you with our fair game three card monty i mean i'm not amazingly uh familiar with it but i know way more about it than he does <laughs> wonderful <laughs> put so me in the just... game <laughs> put me in the game coach he's a pansy so... <laughs> i'm sorry he's really <laughs> intense sometimes uh... <laughs> pippin <laughs> uh the second Earth Genasi pops up and he says, Oh, not a problem, not a problem. Ah, now this is a simple game. And he flips over the cards and you see um, three different cards. Two of them are number cards. One of them is the Queen of Hearts. And he says, all you have to do is figure out which card is the Queen of Hearts. And you place your wager on your ability to do so. And if you win, we double your wager. If you lose, we take your money. Oh, that was that was easy. Okay. Yes. So, are you wanting to wager? Uh, This gentleman over here has wagered a thousand gold, and he looks kind of sick when he says that. Um, (gasps) That's a lot of money. (laughs) That's like a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. But you don't have to wager that much if you aren't comfortable with it. Mendax (laughs) thinks, and in the metaverse, I have a mechanics question. So, Pidge Player, if... Yeah. You transformed back into gas. Would Mendax be able to uh, cast message to communicate with the gas telepathically? <laughs> because what I want to happen is for Pidge Gas to hang around um, behind the dealer to see which is the you know the picture card and to communicate it back. <laughs> I smell cheating. Basically, I want to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm reading Gash's form right now, and it says that... Because I know it says you can't speak, but it's not speaking yeah, if you're telepathic. It does say that I look kind of like... like I, I look like a misty cloud, so oh. I'm not invisible, if that's what you're wondering. All right, all we have to do is just get a pipe and start smoking, and you'll fit right in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if you want to smoke a cigarette or a pipe or something, and then it looks like I'm just... A, a vape? Yeah, Because Man- Mandex some vapes? would totally vape. <laughs> he would, actually. <laughs> he totally would. Um, yeah, and then it says I can occupy the space of another creature, so I could just be right floating around the head of... Yeah. yeah. But you, you've got to make some kind of way for the smoke not to be unusual, and then, yeah, I could telepathically... It says I can't talk or manipulate objects, but I could definitely be telepathically communicating. Are there with... any fire dancers here? No. <laughs> That's unfortunate. There is a fire kitten. <laughs> there is a fire kitten. Could I oh, yeah. jerry-rig some uh, 
some flammable balls on rope and start doing like a fire dancing routine nearby. Yeah, there's a crowd. Heck yeah. yeah. Entertain the people in the back. Okay, oh. yeah. I'm I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take some scraps of cloth um and ball them up and wrap them in some rope that I have here and catch them on fire and start doing a a, a fire dancing routine. <laughs> okay, roll performance. I'm picturing you digging around in your backpack, you know, like bringing out your pajamas, <laughs> sacrificing them for your fire dance. <laughs> I mean, it was only a six. So it's not a very good fire dance. <laughs> so, I mean, you you pull a couple people, um, but most of the, there's like 20 or so people there crowding around. Um, so you pull about mm, seven of them, and but the rest of them are still staring at um, Mendax, who has sat down in the hooded gentleman. That's fine. Does the smoke from my fire dancing waft over the area? Yes. Okay. Yay. All right. Pidge, who was up on a broomstick. Oh, yeah. I guess the broomstick becomes part of... Because it's carried. Yep. Yeah. So it, it all of a sudden, <laughs> instead of being a flying rock gnome on a broomstick, she kind of mists into a cloud, slowly cloudifying. Okay. And then I float down to a monist and join the smoke wafting over the playing card area. I'm in place. Meanwhile, Mendax casts message onto Pidge to open up a telepathic link. Yeah. Okay. I say hi. <laughs> I say hi back, just to, just to test the connection. <laughs> test, test. Test, test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so as you're doing that, Geo, uh, the two Earth Genasis, they look at each other and one of them goes, are you ready, Geo? And the other goes, yes, Thermal. Um, Mendax rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of putting on a show. Um, so you now know that this is the geothermal that um, Teresa was like, don't trust them, they're liars. Um, and they start shuffling the three cards around, switching them back and forth. Um, and they stop after a minute, and you can guess one, two, three, or four where the queen is. It's or... so smoky in here. The smoke is drifting under and above the cards into the crack between them because they're folded on the table, right? Yes. Tented. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so roll perception pitch with advantage. 18. Okay, Thank yes. goodness for advantage. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you see that the third and the second card both have queens of hearts underneath them. Pidge, what does it look like? Whoa. Ooh. <laughs> Fancy. The third and the second cards both have queens on them. Queens of hearts. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay, cool. Thanks. I want to pick one. Okay, which do you, which one do you pick? One. You pick if, one? Okay. If, uh, you, if we're they, aiming for the old one out, right? N no, you're aiming for the Queen of Hearts. Oh, are we? Okay. So do you still pick one? Because you, you know where the Queen of Hearts are. I aim. For, I pick the Queen of Hearts. <laughs> okay. okay. I misunderstood. Um... <laughs> but Mendax didn't, and that's what we call not metagaming. <laughs> yes. So it is um, basically, it's like the shell game where you have like the ball and the cups, but just with cards. Um. So they flip it over, and Geo looks at you, and he's like, Well, well, you've won, my kind sir. Here is double your wager, and he hands it to you. I am so <laughs> amazed. What are the odds of that? Oh, whoa. That I mean, how much did you bet? That can't possibly happen a second time. 10,000 gold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they hand you a you lot of gold. You don't ask someone um... what they bet after they won. But no, it, it <laughs> probably realistically wouldn't have maybe about 50-ish. Mm. Okay. If you want to bet 10,000 gold, they will give you um, that, as I said. Uh, but then they look at you and they say, want to up the ante? You could do double or nothing. Ooh, so they slide 100 gold across the table at you, and then now you have 100 gold to bet. Why not put it back into the pot? Yeah. Ooh. Keep it rolling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to need Mendax to make a perception check with disadvantage. Pidge, you have advantage um, as they're shuffling the cards around. 
Yay, That's... advantage. I got a non-natural 20. Yay, disadvantage. I got a six. <laughs> uh, okay, so Mendax, you don't notice this, but Pidge, you notice them as they're flipping cards. They palm the two queens and switch them with different cards. Oh, that's not good. Can <laughs> I can't interact with physical objects, so I can't like subtly undo that. Uh, but I can tell Mendax about it. So Mendax, you now know that the cards are switched. A monist, you have managed to gather a little bit more of the crowd, and they are now kind of tossing coins at you. Nice, doing a fire dance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like coins. Um, all right, so Mendax, what do you do with your situation? Okay, so I know for sure that none of the cards are winning cards at all, right? Correct. Call them out on their bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to lean in close and just go, don't play games with me, son. Intimidation. Yes, please. That is an unnatural 20. Uh, they are sufficiently terrified. Um, they just go, uh, I don't I don't know what you mean, good sir. If you believe we're cheating, you can uh, check our cards. And they swipe up the cards real fast. And Pidge, you see uh, they're switching back in the queens. And they flip I them tell over. him that telepathically. <laughs> Which one is the, the queen at now? Or... Um, so there is now, they're switching back one queen in. So they're showing the cards. So that you have two number cards and a queen card. Ah, uh, I tell Mendex what happened. The puppet gets real close to their face and just goes, Don't give me that. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Maybe Pidge should uh, turn out of gas and pull the card out of their sleeve. Uh, I would I would definitely pop into this as Rock Gnome. <laughs> it says I can't talk or manipulate objects in any out. Yeah. I exactly. can't talk. Or no, Sorry. I mean like pop pop out of the mist form and be like, aha, pull it out of their sleeve. and. Um, I'm going to do an insight check on the dragonborn who's watching all of this. Okay. Because uh, our, our prey isn't um, geo and thermal. Our True. prey is the sparkly one. Okay. So yes. not very good at insight checks, but I'm going to try it. Roll. You can roll insight or you can roll arcana. Oh, I got. <laughs> I was going for insight. I got a net twenty. Oh, nice. So you, um, you see the spark. You see the shimmering mirage, and you know, um, if you can break this man's concentration, then whatever magic he is casting will just go away. But what does he think of the cheating? Like, is he reacting like he knew Geo and Thermal were cheating, or is he like? surprised that he was playing a game that he couldn't win he knew he he looks like he huh. is not surprised that they were cheating but he looks like he's having a ton of fun anyways okay well then pidge will become a rock gnome on his lap under the table is there a table yes <laughs> poof <laughs> uh he is i i'm not even gonna make you roll for that because anybody would be surprised to just have Someone in their lap. Um, <laughs> so he can disrupt the game and I don't have to call their bluff. Oh. Nice. <laughs> uh, so he kind of stands up and as he's standing up, the table flips. Um, <laughs> and the gold yes. kind of flies back at them and he he's just like, ah. <laughs> uh, uh, and the mirage drops and you are now looking at the face of a green dragonborn. Yes. <laughs> Amonist, restrain him. Uh, okay. Amonist jumps on the dragonborn. Grapple check. <laughs> That's a strength, right? Yes. Uh, 23. Yes, you beat that. You beat that very well. Um, okay, so you wrestle the dragonborn down to the ground, and I guess sit, you have, um, because you are, how tall are you? I am very short, so I'm well. Not, I'm I'm short-ish. I'm five nine, pretty 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 slight here. So I'm really more of a dexterity person. I jump up towards him and wrap my legs around his neck, and then sort of do a flip over him and drag him back down to the ground behind me. And now yeah. I've got him pinned with my knees on his elbows, pinning him to the ground. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he looks at you and he's like. What are you doing? Get off of me. <laughs> Not so fast. 
I grab my two uh, immovable rods from my pack and then click their buttons, press down against his wrists on the ground. Okay, he is now restrained. Um, he looks at you and he's like, I, I don't want to hurt you, just let me go. We have questions. And the crowd is standing there. And, yes. And Geo and Thermal are probably like our tables flipped and Pidge is uh, standing up from uh, under the table. Uh, <laughs> Mendax, make a perception check real fast for me. Gladly. Okay. Uh, 13. Okay. Yes, you beat. You see Geo and Thermal grabbing the bags of coins and getting ready to take off. How big are the bags? Okay. Um, yes, you beat them very well. They they only rolled like a three. Um, <laughs> and they just kind of give it to you and just run. The crowd is... Are you going to do something to try to disperse the crowd? Because the crowd is circling around. Yep, Mendax is going to go back into, like, investigator mode and just go, move along, folks. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Move along. Okay. Um, roll persuasion. Yeah, can I can I give him advantage by looking menacingly at the crowd? Yeah, I mean you did just take down like a ginormous. Yeah, I did. Being okay, so that is a twenty-five. Yes, they they turn and they disperse, and as they disperse, you hear all the other games, um, the game owners and runners, parking their games to get their attention, and they're just gone. Um. Amonis, you do now have uh, 20 extra gold from your performance. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, so you are kneeling on this dragonborn. Pidge, you are standing there. Uh, Mendax, you have gotten rid of the crowd. The dragonborn is not looking happy. What do you do? Is this an appropriate place to, uh, to interrogate, or should we take him somewhere quieter? I mean, we should probably take him somewhere quieter, but why not do it here? <laughs> <laughs> all right fine um so i look down at him again trying to look very menacing and say we know about the lions we have an eyewitness tell us everything you know um persuasion not intimidation intimidation that's actually to intimidation you're right okay uh, rolled a 12 plus 6 is 18. Yeah, that'll beat anything. Um, all right. So he kind of, you, you see him kind of freeze and he goes, we can't talk here. Uh, the Elise would, Elise will find us. Elisa. Mm, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> all right. I use some of the rope in my bag to tie his hands behind him and release the immovable rods. I tie his shoelaces together. <laughs> Is oh, he wearing shoes? Yeah. Dragonborn? Yeah, I mean, he's wearing boots. I tie his shoelaces oh. together. <laughs> Alright, uh, so he's hobbled. Make a... Well, no, I guess you could just do that. Because uh, he's contained. Um, he kind of looks at you, Mendax. Not to brag, but Mendax has been tying his shoes for years now. <laughs> He looks at you, Mendax, and he just goes, uh, It's okay. a double knot as well. It's really difficult. Uh, alrighty, uh, just get us out of the open. All right. Uh, is, is there somewhere nearby that looks uh, quiet? I, I, yes, I, I, can he I can help with that. Uh, I cast Leoman's tiny hut. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It finally comes in handy. <laughs> finally, after all these... <laughs> All this time. Um, so basically that just makes us our own little um, tiny kind of demi-plane sort of hidey hole because uh, it fits right. nine creatures oh, that, right. in. That works. So we can all just hide in there in our only tiny little thing because I believe I can... Yeah, so it's basically kind of a big dome um, so we can just hide in it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. There's that. creatures and objects within the zone. When you cast a spell, can move through it freely. All other creatures and objects are barred from passing through it. So, only we are allowed here. Already, you have a little hub. Also, the Ember Cat E. He talks in your mind. He's like, "That's him. That's him. That's that's the not lizard that I can't eat." Nice. Okay. Cool. We're on the right track. 
Yes. Uh, so I'm assuming you kind of sit him on the ground, and um, what do you say? The puppet comes in. Is like, right, dirt bag, spill it. <laughs> he looks very confused. He's like, a puppet? Yeah. Well, it'll be the last thing you see if you don't answer my questions. Roll intimidation. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's not amazing. But it is a puppet, so let's just stick with that. Um, uh, 14. That does not beat his intimidation. He is not intimidated. He's just like a puppet. Uh, and he looks at you, <laughs> Mendex, and he's like, uh, are, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm absolutely fine. Thanks for asking. Oh, no, it's just my partner's a little on edge. Um, he's had a he's had a hard day. His, his uh, you know, his home life's a bit bit out of whack at the moment. So, I mean, if you could help us out, I'd really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, who are you, Amonist? Are you going to take part in the interrogation? I am waiting to see what happens here. It sounds like the puppet dropped the ball. You want to take over? No, we, no, no we, we've got you, a very Amonist. strong like good cop bad cop thing going on. I enjoy the performances, but yes, I can take over for a bit more of a direct approach. <laughs> uh, so, Amonis uh, leans in and says, so, you wanted somewhere quiet. Now we're quiet. Tell us everything. My name is Lindsay, and I was born 140 years ago, and I peed the bed till I was 20. Move forward a bit. <laughs> uh, I used to work for a circus. Uh, this I, circus? Uh, no, of course not. The better circus, which unfortunately got shut down. Uh, and okay. I just why got... did you steal the lions? Steal the lions? Uh, I didn't steal the lions. And he's blatantly lying to you. And so, um, and he rolled a fifteen deception. So if you could roll an insight, that's would that be insight or perception? Do, do, do yeah. I have to? Because we already had a... Yeah, we, ha we have yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a signed confirmation. Yeah, we have an eyewitness. I already know he's lying. Right. Yeah, but it's to see if we can tell when he's lying, which Pidge cannot. She both knows that there is <laughs> a signed affidavit, and she can't. She knows that she won't be able to tell if he's lying. I also cannot tell if he's lying. I rolled a natural 20. Nat 20, baby. Okay, you you can tell when he's lying. Um, You actually notice... That he is trying to take his hands and he's like playing with bracelets that are on his thing on his wrists. Um, what are those bracelets? They're just gold, kind of like trinkety kind of bracelets. Um, they have some like anchors and some seashells, and they don't like they're not magical. Like you can tell that right away. They're just there. Uh, they're fidget spinners, but in bracelet form. So they're, they're fidget bracelets. Um, so you can definitely tell when he's fidgeting that he is lying. Hmm. Okay. Um, so I like for this point, I don't really super care if I can tell if he's lying because I know he is. Right. Um, and I again repeat, we have a direct witness that you were not aware of. We know exactly what happened when the lions were stolen. Try again. There were no witnesses. It. <laughs> Rebecca made sure of that. And then he just kind of looks and he's like, huh. Amonis well, pulls <laughs> one of his swords <laughs> and taps it. And the, the electric sparks start uh, moving up and down the blade. And he just holds it and says, third time's the charm. And he just kind of, he just kind of like backs off. And if he could lift his hands, he would. And he says, uh, okay, okay. Uh, we, we're, we're trying to get the circus shut down so that way we can start our own. Uh, but the the money and the energy, there's not enough for us to start another one. And Rebecca is tired of being in her sister's shadow. And so we just figured if we just ruin this one, we could just, you know, come in and take over. Um, Where are yeah. the lions? Oh, they're, they're with Rebecca. They're fine. They're just staying. Well, they're fine. The innkeeper who we're renting a room from um, is a little terrified, but the lions are fine. <laughs> and what were you looking for in the office? Oh, the, my, my, well, I'm not, you know, we'll just, 
my sibling, uh, Elisa, she, um, she tends to, she's not, you know, she's not very organized. She never has been, uh, but she tends to keep, you know, the power crystal in there. So I was trying to find it, but, uh, could not dig through that mess. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, I glance over towards Mendax, seeking confirmation of the truthfulness. I give him a sly nod. Yes, he's very much so telling the truth. I give him a sly nod. Interesting. Oh my gosh, your sibling is Elisa? Yeah, um, they don't like to talk about me, because our family dynamic's a little weird, um, and I just, she's doing so well and being so successful, and I just want that. Why should we not turn you over to her right now? Because you could cause chaos? <laughs> That's not a great mm. reason. Makes a good point. <laughs> I like the circus. I would like to see it successful. Well, of course I would hire everyone again. I just want to ruin my sister's life. Why? Because I hate her sibling rivalry. Uh, for fun. She always gets what she <laughs> wants. Uh, oh, take God. your pick. All right, let's turn him in. I agree. <laughs> uh, okay. What do you think, Mendax? Uh, once again, Mendax is kind of scribbling down everything, and he just kind of hands it over. And just, <laughs> just kind of goes, just have a look over over this, your statement. Uh, see if it seems accurate enough to you, and then just sign down at the bottom to confirm that this is an accurate representation of what you just said. And then the puppet comes in, and goes. Otherwise, you're never getting out of here. <laughs> you, you want me to sign? Amonis sharpens his sword. He wants you to sign an affidavit under duress, which will definitely hold up later <laughs> in a court of law. Yeah, but it's a puppet, so... <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to believe him? Uh, he he's, he kind of like wiggles his hands behind his back and is like, I can't sign anything. I'm tied up right now. We'll hold the paper back there. Yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> Make your mark. Um, uh, well, let me see. Oh, okay, uh, he just, like, draws a line, because he, uh, failed miserably. Um, <laughs> counts. It counts. <laughs> <laughs> Not a signature, it's just a line. Um, okay. Uh, all right, what are you going to do now? I think we march him right over to Alicia's office. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sh- should we keep him in the in the dome ju- and then go and speak to her uh, separately, so he can't get out? You know, if we just stick, are you sure um, he can't get out? You put an immovable rod on his chest and he's not going anywhere. That's very true. Uh, below the breathing part. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can okay. also do it on his arms. Just pin yeah. his arms to the floor here. That sounds better. Yeah. Okay. Or you could just immovable rod like. If you had three, you could make a perfect trap in the air, right? You need a to got one. What? You've got one? I've got one. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah, I have two. Because we could just make like three lines and then put his wrist, like, you know. And oh, then... wrist. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, so and one on each of his. his... Yeah. Yeah. One above his wrist sure. and then like one above his kind of hips, do you reckon? Oh, no. She was saying like all three in a triangle with his wrists inside and tight enough that they can't. They oh, slip yeah. Through. Yeah. Just like in the air, because, I don't know, on sure. the ground is weird. Yeah. But okay. how, how much do dragonborns need their hands? Like, do they grow back like other lizards? Oh, no. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how that works. I'm, ju- I'm just trying to, you know, ask myself yeah. how much he would want to escape. And since we're doing this, I'm going to put these handcuffs that prevent plane shifting onto him as well. Oh, since put, we're here. Put those onto okay. his ankles. Right. Sure. They're on okay. his ankles. Yeah. He's right. very properly restrained. Yes, he's he not going escape. anywhere. <laughs> All right. Let's go, guys. Let's run All and right. grab Alicia. Oh, I, I, I'm going to leave the Ember Kitten as a guard and just kind of uh, with, with instructions we... that if, if, he get, if he gets, you know, too, you know, too high above his station, just sit on his chest and uh, just You're do gonna what You're going to try to burn a Dragonborn? Green Dragonborn. Are they not fire resistant? No, they're the poisony ones. Oh, okay. Oh. Yep. Uh, he looks at you and she's like, oh, can I eat him? No, no, If you're don't, good. No, oh. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> and then she just sits there and stares. Um, all right. So are you guys going to El- Elisa's office? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, you guys walk in and she's just sitting there filling out paperwork. Um, and she looks up and she says, oh, did, did you, do you have some information for me? Yes, we do. It turns out it's actually your brother who's trying to sabotage your circus and we have him captured. Oh, my brother. The the failure. Of course. Uh, are you sure? Are you sure? Because last I knew. Check out this signed affidavit. <laughs> That's a line. It counts. It counts. <laughs> His hands were tied. Okay. Uh, d- <laughs> but that still doesn't answer anything about Rebecca or the lions. Uh, oh. What- what? They're staying at an inn. Check out this other one we've got. <laughs> <laughs> this is really saving a lot of time, isn't it? You just get everyone to sign. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. An inn? Why? I, I mean, I guess take me to my brother. All right. All right. We run her back over to the tiny hut. Yeah. Um, and Hop I inside. She, she walks in and she just kind of sees how restrained and she kind of giggles to herself a little bit um (laughs) and she's just kind of like okay um what the hell man (laughs) um i i just quickly lean over to ramonis and just kind of gesture at the the uh green dragonborn just go you don't think he's into this at all do you (laughs) would it be bad if he was i mean a little bit um, I don't know. I mean, you saw we just came from uh, d- d- twirling people up in silk ropes. <laughs> <laughs> carnival is a strange place. Only if you pronounce it carnival. But I mean, I mean, ha- haven't you had enough action for one day? Have you met me? <laughs> <laughs> we'll call that Plan B. Uh, all right. Uh, the two dragonborn are kind of just looking at you two, like, uh, okay. Um, and, um, Lindsay says to his sister, um, basically just, I, we failed. And if I could have just destroyed you, then I could have taken over. And then mom would have been so proud of me because, you know, I'm still kind of grounded. Um, of course I had to magic a friend into my place a little bit. Um, and at least Elisa looks at him and is like, mom and dad are pirates. They don't care. But she says, I'm not, I don't, I can't turn you in to the police, but I guess I can turn you in to them. Um, And then she looks at you three and she says, so I'm assuming we're in some kind of magic place. Uh, Can you guys, I guess, lock him in a stall? We don't have a jail, but I guess a stall would work. Yeah, we can lock him anywhere you want. I'm going to take her a little bit aside and be like, can't you just talk him out of doing this anymore? <laughs> like, if he stops, it'd be fine, right? Well, yeah, but it's more fun to watch mom and dad rip into him, and then he'll be grounded for even longer. All right, we'll lock him up in a stall for you, I guess. And you can tell your parents on him or something. But yeah, we know it's you, Lindsay. You've been found out. <laughs> Congratulations, you have solved my carnival puzzle. Yay! <laughs> all righty uh so you they do that um elisa looks at you and she goes well i guess i mean we have you guys kind of took care of that really super fast i'm kind of surprised that my people didn't do so well but i guess that's what you get when you hire the fire breathing kittens uh we feel free to wander around we have you know games and there's a tournament starting in the fighting arena if you want to check it out okay Woo. <laughs> um, would this be a good time for a break? Is it break time? We break at two hours, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the question is, how much plot do you have left? Because if this was the end, it could just be the end. It doesn't have to be four hours long. Okay, to be fun yeah. is all we ask. That that was all the plot I had. Um, <laughs> that's all the plot the DM okay. has. Well, give us like um like a uh, an epilogue. Like be like yeah. After the okay. fire breathing kittens arrested Lindsay. Yes. You know, you know, okay. like on a, a kind of a crime watch type thing, where they're like, "Yes." Uh, after the fire breathing kittens, 
intervene. <laughs> yes. Lindsay was um, jailed actually, for three before years. Before we do that, <laughs> are you guys going to go to the show? Sure. To the circus show? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got to support my new man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you guys go to the show, and during the show, um, the... I gotta pull. Hold on, I gotta pull up names because I have a lot of names going on. Is there somewhere I can buy roses along the way? Yes, you Aww. can buy them from the merchant. Okay, I'm gonna get some roses and I'm going to use my sword to cut little notches in the bottoms of the stems. Okay. Notches. Yes. Alrighty. Um, you can do that. I'm not gonna make you roll for that. I mean, you, know, you fight yeah. the swords, so you can do it. Um. As you come to the show, uh, the lights are down, you sit down, and when you walk in, um, Clissa, the Earth Genasi in Sparkles, walks out, and she says, Welcome one, welcome all, to the Circus of the Nexus. Here you will see some amazing stories, and some wonderful, wonderful tricks. And as you watch the show um, go on, you see the... um, Did you give E back to uh, Teresa? Teresa? Did you give the ember cat back? Oh, um, yes. Hey, 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 hey. Hold on there. <laughs> Hold on there. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. You, If you want to keep it, you can. I think we should let the ember kitten decide. Okay, I believe um, the ember kitten so... would get on with um, the rest of the crew. And let's be honest, it's a fire kitten. What better mascot <laughs> for the guild than an actual fire kitten? Are you going to pick up all of its poop, Mendex? I can and feed it wood chips and not ice cream. I mean, that means more ice cream for me, so I'm good. I'm okay with it, and I can just make the poop smell different. <laughs> and <laughs> that wasn't a yes, and I'm going to clean it up. That I'll was put, I'm going to make it I'll smell like raspberry swirl. I'll put it in Bob's room. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay, um, I'll make as it the smell like daisies. Change. It can smell like daisies, yes. Um, As the lights change, you see E, see her cue, and she hops off from your shoulder, and she runs into the arena, and she's doing all sorts of cool tricks with Teresa, and she uses the whip, but she's not, like, you can tell, because you've spent time with E, that she's just doing it for show, but E looks very vicious, and her fur floofs up in fire, and she attacks, Um, there's quotations around that, Uh, Teresa and they wrestle and then she wins and then they poof in a puff of smoke but E comes back up to your shoulder um, and she says oh look that was so much fun but um, I have a sister who really wants to join the circus so I figured I could just stay with you and she could join the circus and I could just be with you for a while yeah that'd be great um I mean, do I, do I have to call you E, is, or do you have, like, a prefer, like, can I give you a nickname? I, I mean, I just go by E for Ember Cat. There's not really a lot of us, but, I mean, if you want to give me a name, that's fine, too. Yeah, okay, uh, well, and I just kind of look at uh, Pippin and just go, yeah, naming's going to take a little while, so we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out in, in our own time. I mean, you can't rush these things, can we? Okay. Um, all right, uh, that sounds great. And then the lights go down and they pop back up again. And now there's shimmering sparkles in the air and the silks are being lowered down. And, um... (laughs) Amonis is excited. (laughs) Amonis is very excited. We planned this ahead of time. Down comes, uh, Kieran and Bravemark. And they are doing a routine. And it's very, um, touching. It's like... Lost lovers separated, and they swing in circles, and they come together and break apart. And by the end of it, they come together, and they lock arms, and they spin in a very beautiful circle. And at the very end of all the circus, yes. As they are doing this, I pull out my longbow and notch in my knocked um, (gasps) roses and start firing roses uh, towards them, which they pluck out of the air as they spin together. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yes, they do that. And Kieran is very much so in love with you. Um, <laughs> and at the end of the show, Clissa, the storyteller, pops back up in her beautiful sparkles. And she says, thank you for coming to our show. The story was ours, but now it's yours. 
and everything goes black and everybody exits. Um, and Kieran kind of after the show finds you, all of you standing there and he's just like holding all the roses and he's just like super happy. And he's like, uh, so do you, do you want to join the circus? Do you, I mean, I might be here part time wonderful and he like hands you like a stack of papers and he says well here's all of our contract stuff and then um there's also a schedule of where we travel and then if you just want to like i don't pop in every now and again that would totally be cool ah you have a traveling what is that there's a word for that where the the person like travels and whenever you guys are in the same town you like see one another and then i believe the term is booty call (laughs) yeah yeah i think so too (laughs) Nice. I have collected another lost puppy. <laughs> and I, for one, really hope Crud Jr. never finds out about this. Oh, no. We, we, we definitely have that kind of relationship. Okay. Uh, so as the sun sets, um, they, the sun sets on the fair. And you can tell now that bad things haven't been happening. There are a few more people. And you guys sit in the field where the picnic, where you would picnic with food. Mendax has like a gallon of ice cream. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Pigeon Amonis, is there a particular food that you would like to try? I know Twinkies were on the table at some point. Funnel cakes! Oh yeah, we wanted to get a deep fried something or other. Oh okay, yeah, to, yeah, to feed to Pippin, yeah. Yes, you have a deep fried spread in front of you, and as the It gets dark, you see beautiful fireworks firing into the sky, and the camera goes black. Yay! Yay. (laughs) What a nice day. Yeah. Joining us this time were Amonist. Au revoir. Mendax. If we've learned anything today, it's that to get what you want, you can lie, steal, and cheat. (laughs) And Pidge. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Please leave us a review on iTunes.com. You can subscribe to receive new episodes through your podcast player or by visiting firebreathingkittenspodcast.com or finding us on YouTube. Can you think of someone who might enjoy this podcast? Please share it with them. We don't pay to advertise this show, so the only way we can grow is through the support of listeners like you. Thank you. Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Party Advantage, a D&D play podcast. Join the Ram Pack as they travel across the lands and kingdoms of Arius, finding adventure and shenanigans. We're going to protect you, okay? Are you scared of witches? Yeah. They were the ones that ate my weasel. Who is going to be leading the expedition? I'm Tiny, and I lost my ferret last episode, so... I'm Baby. I swim back, because I'm in danger. (laughs) I hate you. I wanted to swim out and climb it and attacking it. And you're like, yo, you're dumb, stupid, dumb. I know our healer's in the air 200 feet. Tune in every other Wednesday on your podcast platform of choice. Will these adventurers find the advantage on their next encounter? Only one way to find out. See you then. Do you love animals? Do you want to learn more about them in a safe, calm, and immersive environment? On the Relax with Animal Facts podcast, I, Steph Wolf, make it my mission to help you unwind from life's daily stresses, all while learning about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends all across the globe. If you are a serious animal lover and want a podcast to help you take a load off, this is the podcast for you. You can listen to Relax with Animal Facts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Go back to a time where life was simpler, where you could leave your doors unlocked. A time of block parties, bobby socks, and soda jerks. A time to gather around the radio and listen to your favorite sitcom before there was television. So come back with me in an old-time radio comedy time machine. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. You can find more adventures on Amazon.com in the bookstore, Fire Breathing Kittens, all one word, podcast. That's right, you can curl up with a good book based on one of our podcast episodes. The authors do a really great job of adapting them into fun novels. 
And did you know that we have webcomics? Look for the adventures of fire-breathing kittens on webtoons.com. We also have official merchandise on redbubble.com. Yes, that's right. You really can own a notepad with the fire-breathing kitten logo on the front. Or one of your favorite characters. Go to redbubble.com and search for works from your favorite characters such as Frath, Amonist, Azrine, and more.